We do not uh, believe that uh, nuclear weapons or the testing of nuclear weapons is the, the roots of uh, the difficulty, uh, the roots of war. It is uh, the amount of uh, fear, anger, and uh, suspicion that is uh, in us, that is the obstacle for a good relationship between the South and the North. If uh, <coughs> there is no anger, no fear, and uh, no uh, suspicion, we are not going to use uh, nuclear weapons, even if we have a lot of them. And that is why for peace, uh, the most basic thing is not to remove uh, nuclear weapons, but to remove uh, the fear, the anger, and the suspicion that are in us. When uh, President Obama uh, visited uh, the Middle East last time, he declared that uh, peace is uh, possible. I think if he visited uh, Korea, he would say the same thing, peace is possible. We uh, agree with him, but we want to ask, uh, but how? There are many uh, intelligent uh, politicians who have come up with uh, wonderful uh, plans for peace route, uh, peace route, peace maps, but uh, so far these wonderful projects have not been realized. And that is why we know that uh, intelligence is not enough to make peace. When we look deeply into the situation, we see that uh, the tension is due to the amount of anger, fear, and suspicion in the warring parties or in the conflicting parties. And uh, if we know how to remove uh, the amount of anger and fear and suspicion from each side, and then reconciliation would become very easy. President Obama has come up with uh, very uh, intelligent uh, peace plans, but he has not offered us exactly the way to help remove uh, the fear, the uncertainty, the anger, the suspicion, both in the Israeli side and the Palestinian side. When both uh, conflicting parties are full of fear, anger, and suspicion, it's very difficult to negotiate for peace and to go together on the path of reconciliation. center in France, we have uh, invited uh, several times groups of uh, Palestinians and Israelis to come and practice with us. It took about uh, three weeks in order to help uh, both sides to transform and heal uh, themselves and heal the relationship between the two, the two groups. The day when they arrived in Plumlis, uh, they could not look at each other and talk to each other because both sides are full of anger, fear, and suspicion. That is why we, uh, we let uh, the two groups uh, stay apart and we take uh, care of them, helping them uh, to release the tension in the body and to uh, know how to go home to themselves and listening and listen to the suffering inside. 
The first uh, of the four noble truths in Buddhism is uh, dukkha, suffering. And it's very important to get in touch with the suffering, look deeply and understand why, how, and when that kind of ill-being has come to yourself. Usually we believe that uh, our suffering has been caused by the other person or the other group of uh, people. We do not know that uh, most of our suffering are created by ourselves out of our wrong perceptions, our fear, our anger. And uh, we help uh, each group to practice uh, mindful breathing, mindful walking, in order to embrace that uh, suffering in them and help uh, listen deeply to that kind of suffering to understand the roots. And uh, in about uh, four, five days, we'll be able to get the enlightenment, get the insight that uh, we are partly responsible for the difficulty in the relationship. We have produced uh, thoughts, speech, and action that have uh, created a misunderstanding, fear, anger, suspicion on the other side. So we cannot uh, simply blame on the other side all of all kinds of suffering that we undergo now. And also, during the first week of practice, uh, we help uh, each uh, group to breathe, walk, and get in touch with the refreshing, healing, uh, nourishing elements of life that are available inside and outside in order to help them to, to get stronger and have more joy and happiness. In the Buddhist uh, Sutra on Mindful Breathing, the Buddha uh, recommended exercise on breathing to uh, generate the energy of joy and happiness. If uh, a Buddhist practitioner does not know how to generate the energy of joy and uh, happiness to nourish himself or herself, she cannot, she cannot go very far in the practice. And uh, with enough uh, uh, nourishment by joy and uh, happiness, we will be able to handle the amount of suffering that is in us. After one week of, the pra of practice, uh, both groups uh, feel already much better. Beginning the second week, we initiate them to the practice of uh, compassionate listening and uh, loving speech. One group practices uh, listening, and the other group practices uh, expressing themselves. You have the opportunity, you have the opportunity to tell everything in your heart your suffering, your difficulty, your despair. And uh, because uh, there are people who are capable of listening to you. You can tell the other group every kind of suffering that you have undergone, children and adult. And uh, you should try to use a kind of language that can help the other side to understand you better. You should try not to uh, condemn, accuse, uh, blame, because if, uh, your, if uh, your language is full of condemn condemnation, blame, and so on, it's, it would make it uh, too difficult for the other side to get your message. You should tell the other side everything in your heart uh, and uh, 
use uh, the language, uh, gentle kind of language, which in Buddhism we call uh, loving speech, right speech. And for the for the ones who are listening, you should uh, they should uh, practice uh, deep listening, compassionate listening, and uh, compassionate listening is uh, to listen uh, with compassion in order to help uh, the other side to suffer less. And while listening, you practice uh, what we call uh, mindfulness of uh, compassion. You breathe in and out, and you maintain the awareness of uh, compassion by telling yourself just one thing. I am listening to them with only one purpose, to help them a chance to suffer less. And if uh, they they can keep that kind of uh, awareness alive, they will be able to listen for one hour, two hours, without uh, irritation or anger. Because uh, the energy of compassion is wonderful. That energy uh, protects us and does not allow what the other persons say to touch off uh, irritation and anger in you. And when you listen like that for one hour, it's very healing. It helps the other side, the other person to suffer much, much less. During the second week of practice, both uh, Palestinians and Israelis, they had uh, several sessions of uh, deep listening and loving speech. And right During the first uh, session of deep listening, they are able already to see that on the other side, they have suffered exactly like on our side. And they can see easily that on the other side, there are human beings just like us, and who have suffered exactly the same kind of suffering like us. When you see them like that, you are no longer angry at them anymore. There is uh, the element of uh, compassion in your eyes. And uh, when you look at them like that, you don't suffer anymore, and they feel much better. And the process of healing begins. On the third week, it's very easy People uh, of both groups can go together for walking meditation, holding hands, or sitting down together, sharing a meal. And on the last day of the retreat, they always come up uh, together as one group, not two groups and report about uh, the fruit of their practice and uh, always promise us that they, when they go back to the Middle East, they go organize the practice like that. So other Israelis and Palestinians will come and practice and suffer less. Uh, they do not uh, practice alone because in Plum Village, uh, uh, Retreatants, practitioners came, come from uh, 40, 50 countries, and uh, we will sit down with them, practice uh, listening with them, breathing with them, walking with them, and offer them our collective energy of mindfulness and peace to help them uh, to uh, succeed better in their practice.
Suppose uh, the first day when they first arrive, we invite them to sit down together and discuss about uh, how to make peace. We know that it will fail right away. If you are a politician, you might like to learn the Buddhist way of uh, organizing a peace uh, negotiation. The first thing you do is to invite uh, many people who know the art of breathing, uh, smiling, walking, to produce the collective energy of peace and joy and brotherhood, sisterhood. And uh, when the conflicting parties come, you invite them not to discuss cast about peace, but just to practice, to join other people to practice mindful breathing, mindful walking, releasing the tension, and uh, get to know each other and listen to each other's suffering. If you know how to uh, invite these people into the practice of uh, releasing the tension, in their body. If you know how to uh, help them to breathe and walk in such a way that can help them uh, recognize and calm down their feelings and their emotions. If you can uh, help them to listen and understand their own suffering, and then uh, the peace negotiation will have a better effect. There are wise people in the country. They are Buddhist, they are non-Buddhist, but they have the power, the capacity to, to calm themselves, to uh, listen with compassion. You have to invite them to help you with uh, the peace conference. They will help you uh, to release the tension in the body, to uh, calm down your emotions and uh, feelings, and to listen with compassion. Buddhism in the past has helped uh, so many uh, people to reconcile with themselves to bring peace and reconciliation in the family, in the society, and in the nation. And uh, if uh, Buddhism know how to renew itself, she will be able to continue that kind of work in these uh, difficult modern times. The teaching and the practice of uh, restoring communication and bring back uh, reconciliation is very clear and concrete in Buddhism. In the past uh, 40 years, we have offered so many retreats in uh, Europe and America uh, and we always uh, offer this kind of teaching and practice. And the miracle of reconciliation always takes place in our retreats. Uh, retreats organized in Europe and America are very well attended. Sometimes uh, 1,200 people attend the retreat for six days in a row. During the first few days, uh, we help people to release the tension in the body and to learn how to calm down painful feeling, the painful emotions in them. Uh, and on the fifth day, we, uh, we instruct people how to use uh, the practice of compassionate listening and loving speech to restore communication 
and to heal their relationship. And on the, the on, at the end, uh, on the afternoon of the fifth day, we always ask people to put into the practice of deep listening and loving speech in order to reconcile with the other person. If the other person is in the retreat, that would be easier. But if uh, she or he is not in the retreat, and then you, you have the permission to use uh, your telephone, your smartphone, to uh, practice uh, compassionate listening and loving speech. During the first uh, four or five days, you have learned how to listen to your own suffering. And that is why now you are capable of recognizing the suffering in him or in her, the other person. The other person uh, has a lot of suffering in him or in her, but because they do not know how to handle the suffering. That is why he or she has become the victim of that suffering, and you are only the second victim. The other person may be your husband, your wife, your daughter, your son, your father, your mother. And when you are able to see the suffering in him or in her, you are no longer angry at that person. And you can begin to use the kind of speech that we call in Buddhism loving speech. You go uh, to him or to her and you say, Darling, I know that you have suffered so much in the last five, seven years. I have not been able to help you to suffer less. In fact, I have made the situation worse by reacting in such a way that uh, make you um, angrier and more frustrating, frustrated. I'm sorry, it's not my intention to make you suffer. It's because I did not see, I did not understand the suffering in you. I need your help. Please tell me what is in your heart, your suffering, your difficulties. I need to listen. I need to understand, because I know if I understand, I will not react the way I have and make you suffer like the way I have. I remember in a retreat in northern Germany, uh, many uh, uh, young, uh, many uh, German uh, gentlemen uh, reported to me on the sixth day of the retreat that uh, using their portable telephone, they had been able to reconcile with their father at home. One of them uh, reported like this, uh, dear teacher, first I did not believe I could talk to him gently like that because I was so angry at him. I didn't believe that I can talk to him gently like the, I did last night. So I was surprised that when I call him and hear his voice, I was able to use that kind of uh, language called uh, compassionate uh, loving speech. I believe that uh, it's thanks to the fact that I was able to see his suffering and uh, to see my uh, my part of responsibility in the difficult relationship. So I did not feel any difficulty in using that kind of language. I said, my father, 
I know you have suffered a lot, a lot. I could not help you to suffer less. In fact, I have uh, made you suffer more by the way I reacted. I have reacted with uh, stubbornness, anger, fear. I'm sorry, my father. It's not my intention to make you suffer. It's because I did not see, I did not understand the suffering in you. You should help me, my father. Please tell me about your difficulty, your suffering, so that I will not be, I would uh, not, no longer react the way I have in the past and make you suffer. If uh, you, do not, you do not help me, who will help me? That kind of uh, talking, that kind of speech is possible if we have uh, some amount of understanding and compassion in us. And four days of practice in a retreat are just enough to provide you with uh, enough understanding of suffering and compassion for you to use that kind of uh, um, uh, compassionate uh, listening and loving speech to restore communication. And in uh, every retreat, several people always come up on the sixth day and report to us that the, the night before, before midnight, they have uh, made good use of the Buddhist practice of deep listening and loving speech and reconcile with their beloved ones. I believe that uh, Buddhism can help uh, tremendously with uh, reconciliation within the country and between the north and the south. We should know that nuclear weapons is not the issue. The issue is uh, fear, anger, and suspicion. When we have uh, a lot of anger and fear and suspicion, what we say, what we do, uh, may cause a lot of misunderstanding. And the other side may think that we are trying to destroy them, to harm them. Even if we have the good intention to offer, to help. Suppose uh, the, the South, uh, make an offering of uh, rice and food to the north, saying that uh, there is a lack of uh, food and many people are starving in the north. And uh, the south can say it with honesty and goodwill. But the north, uh, because they have suspicion and fear and, and anger, they may take it as a kind of... Uh, of uh, a propaganda to uh, to uh, to um, to disvalue uh, them, and the North uh, may may say may think that uh, that is a kind of move that aims of uh, talking ill about the North, that the North is not capable of nourishing their own population, that the South is much better in food and uh, uh, technology, and misunderstanding is something very easy to happen. Mm -hmm. And when the President of the South uh, went to meet uh, the President of uh, North America, of, uh, of, Ameri of uh, the United States State of America, the 
the North may have the wrong perception that uh, this meeting is only something um, uh, plotting against the North. Mm. When you have a lot of uh, fear, anger, and suspicion in you, everything people do or say can be easily distorted. And that is why uh, the most uh, important issue of peace and reconciliation is not the removal of uh, nuclear weapons, but uh, what to do in order to help remove uh, the amount of uh, fear, anger, and suspicions that, that is in us. I don't believe that the North enjoy making uh, nuclear weapons. They do that because they are fearful. On this side, we may have done something, uh, said something that uh, create a misunderstanding and give rise to that kind of fear and anger in them, in a difficult relationship. To blame just on one person is wrong. If we just blame uh, on the North, that is equally wrong. If uh, in the North there is a lot of uh, fear, anger, and suspicion, that does not mean that in the South the, these things do, do not exist. There is also division, misunderstanding, fear, anger, suspicion among the people in the South. And according to the Kung An, the sound of one hand, the South has to come back to herself and listen to her own suffering in order to understand the suffering so that uh, healing, the process of healing can begin. And we do that, we can do that uh, in the Buddhist way. We used to be a Buddhist country, and there must be in our population those of us who know how to listen with compassion, who know how to calm down the anger and the fear and help transform us. And I think that uh, Buddhist and political leaders have to identify these uh, people in the population and invite them over to help us. And then we will invite the people representing different uh, sections of the population who always complain that they are victims of uh, inequal inequality, uh, oppression, uh, poverty, suppression, to come and, and have a chance to, to speak out, just like in a practice community, practice center, we invite the best people in the community to sit down and listen to the suffering of the people uh, who need to empty their heart. And these sessions of practice, these uh, sessions of practice are like um, Buddhist meditation uh, with deep understanding, uh, deep uh, listening compassionately compassionate uh, listening and loving speech to help uh, people to suffer to to suffer less and sessions of practice like this can be tele televised so that the whole population can follow and practice together and we believe that if we if we know how to do it correctly compassionate listening and then the process of healing will take place. And uh, in a few months, uh, the South will be able uh, to listen to the North and help the North to do the same. I remember 10 years ago while visiting uh, Korea, uh, I hear the news that uh, President Bush uh, started the war with uh, Iraq. 
that did not surprise me very much because uh, I was there in America in September 11th and I noticed that the collective energy of anger and fear is so, so huge. When the collective uh, energy of fear and anger is so powerful, it will lead naturally to a war. Four days after September 11th, I hold a meeting, a kind of uh, Buddhist uh, meditation session in uh, um, Santa in Berkeley, uh, uh, state of uh, California. 4,000 people attended uh, the event, and I urge people. I, and I urged America to try to calm down the emotion the way the Buddhists uh, um, do when there is a strong emotion. I know, I knew that if uh, the energy of uh, fear and anger continue like that, there will be certainly a war. About 10 days later, I gave uh, the same kind of uh, recommendation to a crowd of uh, 3,000 people uh, in New York City, recommending, recommending America to calm down their strong emotions. And uh, it was the time when my book, uh, Anger, was first published in North America. America went to war. America was, is not a Buddhist country, but in a Buddhist country like Korea, things can be different. You can make good use of the practice of Buddhism in order to calm down our fear, our anger, our suspicion, and heal ourselves in order to help the other side to heal and reconcile. I have talked about the role of Buddhist practitioners and politicians, but I want to say something about the role of the mass media in all of that, all of this. A number of years ago, uh, while visiting India, I was uh, invited by the Times of India to be guest editor of a special edition called uh, Peace Edition. And that was on the day of uh, memorial of Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, I came with uh, a number of monastics to the office of the Times of India as a guest editor. And before he was able to do anything, some bad news uh, arrived. There was a lot of bombing and uh, the death of many innocent people in one of the northern uh, states of India. And one of the, of the editors asked me, Dear Thay, what can we do on a morning like this? We just arrive and we really get very bad news. And I said that uh, the first thing we have to do is to calm down our emotion our pain. If we do not have uh, enough peace in us, we should not write the report right away. If we have a lot of fear and anger in us, and what we write down as an article will water the seed of fear and anger in a population that is uh, to harm, to harm them, and to help create a collective uh, energy of anger and fear which is not healthy, which is not good for the nation. Of course, you have to report about bombing, but as uh, a good journalist, you can report in such a way that can water the seed of understanding and compassion in your readers rather than to water the seed of fear and anger in them. So in the process of uh, healing, restoring communication and reconciling, the mass media plays a very important role. 
And I think the Buddhist uh, community here should uh, sometime offer a retreat for journalists alone so that they know how to uh, calm down their emotions so that they can do better their, their job as uh, a reporter. Thank you for listening with compassion. <laughs>